Carl, it's good to see you. It's always good to be back. We're excited about this season, as excited as I've ever been about any season. I think we've got a group of young men that are ready to be dedicated, and they might surprise some people. All right, Coach, before we go a little bit more in depth with 1993, let's take a look back at 1992. Here is a musical montage of highlights. Well, I'll tell you, Coach, if you weren't in the football mode or mood, you are now having looked back at last year, 1992, a season in which you finished at 4-6. and six. We saw a lot of George Beisel on those highlights. You are going with him. He is your co-captain. He seems to be the leader for this year's Flying Dutchman team. We are, Carl. We're, we've got a strong belief that George is a leader. He was voted co-captain, received about 98% of the votes, and we're going with him. All right, speaking about the offense, last year, the offensive line, you had three freshmen, a sophomore, they were very young. This year, a year of experience from playing last year as a unit, but you still go with another newcomer. He's big, he's strong, he's Joe Yanis. Right, the super freshmen are now super sophs. That's Jamela, that's Gardner, and that's Fiore. But Joe Yanis, a wrestler, is only going to be a sophomore. He looks outstanding. His problem is he's got to learn the system like those young men did last year, but we're very excited about him. All right, let's go to the, so the side of the football that you really enjoy defensively, and you have to talk about Lee Harris. You will not have your leading tackler of a year ago. He is out for the season with a herniated disc. What does Lee Harris, what did he mean to the team? What will you miss most about him? I think if we ranked our football players, Carl, we'd rank Lee as our number one football player, both coaches and players. He was voted co-captain as a junior, He's a 3.5 student, an excellent hitter. He's going to be a real vacuum in that defense. We're going to miss him. And I think we're, a young man named Rocco Sadler is going to have to fill the void. And hopefully, I think Lee's going to be operated on, so he'll be back in a year. All right, so we stay defensively. Moving from a linebacker to defensive back position, maybe perhaps fill some of that void Lee Harris will leave is Dante Gillum. What do you expect from Dante? Well, Dante is a hitter extraordinaire. He is just, uh, he doesn't seem to know the defense, but then all of a sudden he performs. He's got to learn the strong safety spot vacated by Steve Javinsky. Right now, I think he was a little too small for a linebacker, so I think that's the spot for him. He's looking good at the position. All right, Coach. Now, as we go to break, our microphones caught up with George Beisel, the co-captain, as I mentioned. And here are some of the words of wisdom that George Beisel expects from the 1993 Hofstra Flying Dutchman. Everyone's really excited about the season. No one's going it 
there's a lot more unselfishness this year, I feel like, you know, people really rooting for a team effort. You know, they want the team to win. They'll do whatever it takes. It was a lot more settled situation out here than it was last year. Why? I don't see last year as unsettled. I just see this, uh, this year the team, you know, they don't want to feel like we felt last year at the end of the season. So everyone has an up attitude and they want to win. Welcome back to the Hofstra Football Show. You know, last week they had the blue gold scrimmage here at Hofstra University, and Coach Joe Gardy allowed us to put a wireless microphone on him. So here are some of the sights and sounds from that annual blue gold scrimmage. <laughs> Continue the series, continue the series. Twenty-five seconds clock is gonna kill you. All right, field goal up, let's go, first field goal unit. Good kick. All right, back down here on the 35 again. Back down here, going this way. Good job, good snap, good hold. Good kick, Walter. Dave, spread those safeties, Dave Lilly. Coach Lilly, those safeties are too close together. Stop, coach, you stop running and instead of striding. Nick, keep striding after it. Keep striding with those arms. Nick, it was there. It looked good, Toronto. All we got to do is get the right touch and timing. Timing and touch. That play looks so good. God almighty. Hey. Hey, I was licking my chops on that one. There wasn't one god darn ball call. That's why you don't have an interception. For God's sakes. What the heck do we do in our drills all week? Good fire, John. Good catch, Kenny. When you're a Raider, and they're doing some type of stuff, boom check, and then you go back. Okay? Go, score, Don! Score, Dante! Score! Hey, get up! Kick off, go get excited! Go hug him and kiss him! God almighty, what do you want? Great job, Dante! Good blocking up front, babies! Good blocking! Hey, Don. Not bad. Don, I thought you slowed down at the end. We have had a great training camp. It isn't over really till Tuesday. We got a practice tomorrow. We got a practice Sunday. But we are still in training camp. Use good common sense. This is a good football team. We have never seen so much hitting here. We've got a lot of things to iron out. We've got to maybe tackle better. We've got to not drop passes. We've got some penalties that we've got to eliminate. But we've got a week, and more than that, a day and a week to do it. You can be as good as you want to. This football team is ready. You are primed, and the only way you're going to lose is if we beat ourselves. You can start tonight. 
you can stay focused. You can stay focused to beat Butler and take one team one week at a time and be thinking nothing but playoffs. You work too hard in the offseason now to stop. We are going. I am so excited about this football team. It's unbelievable. I've got more goosebumps than I ever had in coaching. You can be as good as you want to. As good as you want to. Believe in us. You can be as good as you want to. Nestled in a woodland hideaway, the Fox Hollow has always represented the special tradition of the North Shore grandeur and beauty. A beautiful garden chapel and an outdoor cocktail hour setting will provide a picturesque remembrance of your special day. All affairs are designed with a restaurant concept of menu and preparation to ensure the individuality and uniqueness of every function. Come, rediscover the countryside elegance of the Fox Hollow. I get to get to my show. Let's go. Easy. Stetson Cologne. Comfortable, easy to wear. Stetson, Say, you like country music? Should I? Not right now. Where's that great smelling guy who got me here tonight? I've got a front row seat here just for you. Stetson Cologne. Easy to wear, hard to resist. Your biggest competitor is working on a proposal for the same job you're after. You want this to be enlarged? They have about the same idea as you do. Copy this slide. The only difference is... Let's print it. They own a Canon color laser copier, and you don't. Who would you give the job to? If you think you can't afford a Canon color laser copier, maybe you can't afford to be without one. New York's authorized source for Canon office equipment, Leslie Copiers. For more information, call 1-800-LESLIE-9. Hofstra football show now joined by the assistant athletic director here at Hofstra University, Harry Royal. And Harry, thanks for, uh, so much for coming by here on the Hofstra football show. As I was talking with Coach Joe Gardy, we made mention that this year the Flying Dutchman football team is a full-fledged 1AA squad. What does that mean to the viewer who doesn't know what 1AA is all about? Well, it, it means that after three or four years of various uh, NCAA uh, regulatory processes, we have finally come to where we've wanted to be. It's been a long road. We've endured a lot here at this university uh, going into the decision to go to 1AA, then er entering what was called a period of conformity. And that used to be the old application process. And that's when we had to act like a 1AA school and uh, uh, endure the rigors of a 1AA program while at the same time maintaining all the standards of Division Three. And then, of course, recent legislation has just mandated uh, all Division I programs with a football program to be 1AA. So uh, we were going where we're here. We were prog progressing to be at this point anyways and have learned a lot in those last few years of, of conformity that have been uh, great experiences. At this level, at 1AA, what does that do? What does it mean for recruiting or not recruiting? Well, it's a whole different ballgame in recruiting. Uh, in Division III, uh, the key is numbers and the rules are few as far as the restrictions on how to recruit. In uh, 1A, 1AA football and Division II, there are many regulations and restrictions regarding uh, contact periods, evaluation periods, the number of recruits you can have on campus, official visits, uh, the number of persons that you can actually end up with as initial counters, the number of counters in a program, the amount of equivalencies of aid. It, it is a, it's fantastic the amount of restrictions that you have and the governances of which you have to abide by in order to have not only a program that is by the rules, as we all know there are regulations, but Hofstra intends to follow the rules to the intent of the rule, even to the level of perception being beyond approach. What about scholarship? Are we talking more financial aid? Which way are we going? Well, we're going to talk both at Hofstra right now because Hofstra's taken a model uh, after the Patriot program, uh, Patriot Conference League. Uh, it is a need-based scholarship that has a participatory requirement. So therefore, a student will receive aid based on their family's ability to contribute, yet they are required to participate in the program and to be a part of the program. There are no uh, limitations on success. We're not requiring them to achieve a starting status, but they must participate. All right, you talk about, you mentioned a Patriot League. 
Hofstra is an independent. There has been talk that they're trying to get into a league, the university. Where does that stand right now? Being a full-fledged one double team, does Hofstra have a better opportunity to get into perhaps a Patriot League or their, uh, a league of that stature? Well, I'm going to give you a little personal opinion here. You, you're asking me, and uh, maybe put this, uh, some of the standard answers aside, and as a spectator and, and a, a person and as a participant of the program for years, I say, what's the rush? And many of us say that, because in independent 1AA football, you can enjoy uh, independency. It's not like basketball, where you need that league to get into the championships. Uh, you earn your way into the championships in 1AA, and it's an opportunity for Hofstra to truly explore. If we look at our schedule right now, we're exploring out west, uh, playing the Butlers in Illinois. Uh, we have some Patriot teams. We have some Yankee conference teams. We're seeing them. They're seeing us. Certainly, Joe has made mention many times. We learned a lot at Montana and JMU last year. Uh, and, and there are different levels of 1AA, and we're just kind of finding our spot. And we've got several years to do it because we, our schedule is, is rich. As a matter of fact, uh, we always kid around here. We can truly be the champions of, uh, of the Patriot Conference because we play all the teams and so therefore can end up with a 6-0 and record. Uh, at the end of uh, next year. So uh, that's how, uh, you know, there are a lot of things that we do that are fun. I'm going to throw a little curveball at you. A couple of rule changes this year in college football. Going to get a chance to look at some of them. Now they've moved the hash marks uh, closer to the center of the field. Uh, the chop block is uh, now thigh or below instead of the knee. Open wounds. Fumble Ruski has been eliminated. Offensive pass interference is no longer uh, including on a loss of down. You're a former defensive coordinator here. Any one rule that you think betters the game that we see right there? There are certainly uh, uh, rules changes on that list that are very important to the game, uh, particularly in the safety element of the game, uh, with wounds and chop blocks and things of that sort. There are other answers which um, you know, people can have fun talking about philosophically, uh, whether you should have wide hash marks or not. We'll, we'll see what happens, right? Yeah. Harry Royal, thanks very much for being a guest here on the Hofstra Football Show. Now, each and every week, as a feature here on the Hofstra Fo Football Show, we'll be talking to former football players, the alumni, get their thoughts on a great moment, a great game, or even season. This week, we start off with former offensive lineman, Steph Trinaski. Well, I'd have to say uh, our undefeated regular season, 1990, uh, the most fantastic combination of talent, of uh, brotherhood, of the tightest bond that I've ever been involved with in my life, and I'll never ever forget that time. Why was that such a great group of guys? We had such a diverse group of people who wanted nothing more than to win football games and to stay tight with one another and to work together, and somehow I'll never ever forget it brings chills back every time I think about it. They come here from 60 countries around the world. They come here from 35 states across the nation. come from around the corner to challenge their intellect, to stretch their imaginations, press their abilities, to equip themselves for life. Hofstra University, call 516-HOFSTRA. The Chateaubriand creates a unique contrast of plush contemporary dimension and picturesque outdoor beauty. The newly designed outdoor garden terrace affords you the perfect setting to share your nuptials and present your guests with a beautiful place to celebrate the event. The All right, Coach, I look at that schedule. It's a full-fledged 1AA. This is the first year for Hofstra on the 1AA level. All the way down the line, there isn't an easy opponent. Carl, we're running with the big dogs. <laughs> it's scary, but it's exciting. I'll tell you, our young men are excited about it. All right, and of course, the first game is Butler University. What can we expect from Butler? Butler, we really don't know much about. They kind of play some good football teams in northern Michigan, Valparaiso. They're a lot, I think they're going to be a lot like Dayton. They're not going to make many mistakes. They, they run 60-40. They come after you defensively. They go with speed rather than size. I think they could be as good as Dayton last year. All right, let's take a look at some of their highlights, some of their key personnel that come back on the offensive side of the football, and they've got a real good quarterback in Jason Stahl. Now, he can throw short, he can throw long, and he can thread the needle, Coach. What we like about him, Carl, he's a good athlete. Good athlete. Now, he, as we see him throwing the short pass there, 
He's got a good wide out. He'll throw here. This is a 58-yard completion last year. This went to Eric Voss. Your secondary could have a lot of trouble with the speed of Voss. I'm concerned about the mismatch of athletic ability at the point of attack. Voss and Hill are two good ones. And he seems to be able to read the secondary very well here, threading the needle right over the middle. He's a good one, and those receivers are scary, Carl. All right, when you look at Butler from the other side, when you talk about them defensively, I know you're concerned about seeing number 83 all day long, and that will be Dave Kathman, one of their linebackers. He's one of the finest defensive players we've ever watched on film. He snaps, goes down, and makes the tackle on long punts. And, I, and the rest of their defense is small but quick, and they'll hit you. What do you have to do both offensively and defensively against Butler? What game films did you get from them to review in preparation for this game? We got their last three games, and they got our last three games. I don't know what they're going to tell from Montana. But I think what they'll, they will not beat themselves. They like to run 60-40. Uh, defensively, they don't come after you with a lot of different schemes. They're kind of vanilla, but they do not beat themselves. We can't fall into the trap, Carl, and beat ourselves. Do you know for a fact if they played or faced any run-and-shoot offenses last year? I don't believe so. The, the teams that they played the last three games, we've never even heard of Indianapolis and teams like that. But they look like they're a very disciplined football team. And, you know, by nature of our offense and defense, sometimes we can't be. Okay, now we've talked about Butler. How about Coach Ken LaRose? Here are his thoughts on Hofstra University. Uh, Hofstra uh, will present a, 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 a stiff challenge for us here in our opener. Uh, not having played them before and not knowing a whole lot about them uh, previously, we do have some, we did make a summer exchange, and uh, like I said, they are going to uh, present a, a stiff challenge to us. Uh, offensively, uh, we've got to um, prepare against their 4-3 defense and some variations uh, off of that. And, uh, They've got a uh, attacking type of defense, and uh, so we're going to have to prepare for that. Uh, defensively, uh, they run a, a wide open offense, and uh, uh, they come with uh, four wide outs. Uh, at times, they'll go to no backs, uh, uh, a big passing attack, and we've got to get our secondary corps ready to, uh, to get on the field. You know something, Joe? He talks just like you do as a coach. He didn't get specific, seemed more generic, but you kind of get an idea of what he's talking about. What about the comments from Coach Ken, LaRo Ken LaRose? I've talked to Ken a couple times. He wanted to know about what hotels. He's a nice young man. I gave him a couple good Italian restaurants. I think he, he really, we don't know what to expect from each other. It's going to be interesting. You know how long it takes for us to warm up in the first quarter. I hope it doesn't take us too long. Will you throw any wrinkles in against Butler? Yeah, yeah, we will, yeah. And I'm sure he'll have some for us. Well, and I know you're not going to tell me that. We're going to have to wait no. until the game against Butler on Saturday night over at Hofstra Stadium. Coach, good luck against Butler. Good luck in 1993. I know you want to turn around last year's 4-6 and six record. Thanks, Carl. It's good to be back. Now, remember, you can catch Coach Joe Gardy and I on the Hofstra football show preceding each Hofstra game right here on Sports Channel. We'll see you again next time on the Hofstra football show with Coach Joe Gardy. Stadium as the Joe Gardy era enters its fourth year. We're quicker, we're faster, we're stronger. We're excited about making the move from Division III to 1AA. Co-captain George Beisel will direct the weapons in Hofstra's explosive run-and-shoot offense. The defense is faster and stronger. Camp is over. Hofstra makes the move. Their first official 1AA season begins next on Sports Channel. Good evening and welcome to Hofstra Stadium as Sports Channel begins a new season of local college football. Tonight, the Flying Dutchman open up against the Bulldogs of Butler University. 
Well, hi again, everybody. I'm Barry Landers, and welcome back for another season of college football here on Sports Channel. The first of 14 telecasts you'll see, the first of nine Hofstra football games. Once again, a pleasure to be working with this year. On my left, former Jet star Marty Lyons, and on my right, Carl Rarder, who'll be working on the sidelines. Carl, big year in Division Three and Division Two football. Many of those schools moving up to 1AA, including uh, this Butler team. What can we expect this year from them? Well, you're right, Barry. The Butler Bulldogs were very successful at the Division Two level now at 1AA. How successful? Three national playoff appearances in the last 10 years. They're under the guidance of second-year coach Ken LaRose, who has a real good quarterback leading his team. His name is Jason Stahl, and Jason Stahl can throw short, he can throw deep, and he can thread the seam of the secondary, which could be a problem for Hofstra tonight. Stahl has two excellent wideouts in Eric Voss and John Hill. When you talk to the Hofstra coaches, they'll tell you they're a lot like Dayton Butler is. They're not that big, they're not that strong, but perhaps the most important factor, Barry, Butler will not beat themselves. Well, Carl, as we certainly saw last year, one of the problems Hofstra had was beating themselves, Marty, on many occasions. Have they gotten better in that area? Barry, Joe Gardy considers this team the few and the proud. Last year, going four and six, they made a lot of mental mistakes on offense, and they gave up too many quarterback sacks. Defensively this year, they had a big blow. They lost their leading tackler last year, Lee Harris. The leadership is like having another coach on the field. That'll be a big question mark tonight with that young secondary. Joe said, we're going to go out. I feel confident these guys are ready to go. They're not playing as individuals. They're playing as a team. And we're only minutes away from kickoff, and it's almost showtime. Well, it should be a very interesting battle. And we'll be back with the start of tonight's game in just a moment. Get set for college football on Sports Channel. who was a star at Butler, a longtime assistant, did a great job last year, 8-2, and two, Marty. And they're very excited this year, uh, Barry. They haven't faced a run and shoot. They're looking forward to playing Hofstra, but it's still going to be a big challenge tonight. Joe Gardy, Ken LaRose, neither one knows what to expect. Hofstra won the toss and has deferred, so they will be kicking off. And as we look at uh, some of the facts about these two teams, uh, of course, Butler from Indianapolis, a record of 8-2 last year in the Midwest Football Conference, moving into the Pioneer League. Been a tough league, playing with Dayton, moving up from Division Three to 1AA non-scholarship. Should be a good conference. And, of course, Hofstra, an independent off the 4-6 and six record last year, hoping to better that record this year. And the schedule's tougher. Well, I think that they learned a lot last year, Barry. They had to mature. Going four and six, Joe Gardy, his staff, took a lot of the blame for it. But the bottom line is Joe's got these players ready to play. Now they have to go out and execute. All right, so Walter Oshansky, number four, getting set to kick off as the 53rd football season of Hofstra University is about to be unfolded. Deep men, Eric Voss, number 12, he's their fastest wide receiver and an excellent return man. Averaged almost 23 yards of return last year. As Walt Oshansky implores the fans to get excited, they're up on their feet. As the Hofstra Flying Dutchmen are underway in this season. Good kick by Olshansky, and Voss will take it in the end zone and down it. That's got to be a good sign very much off the bat. Well, we talked about the kickers early in the year. Walter Oshansky had a great training camp, great scrimmages. Joe Gardy is very high on it. Quarterback Jason Stahl, let's take a look at the uh, offense of this uh, very fine uh, ball club. Stahl is the quarterback, and Richard Johnson, who played fullback last year, a real bulldozing tailback. The wide receivers are Voss and Hill. A new tight end is Dixon. The offensive line is led by Mike Platt and Jeff Burks on the right side, and uh, that is a big positive for this team. They feel the offensive line is a good one. Out of the eye formation, Stahl barking out signals. Here's the pitch to Johnson. Johnson hit hard as he crosses the 20, 22-yard line, driven down Vinny Leone, one of the first men in, along with Fritzy Avon, number 58. And that Hofstra defense, Marty, uh, has played very well in the two scrimmages. They had a great scrimmage last week. And let's take a look at quarterback Jason Stahl and uh, quite a season last year. Well, Stahl has a strong arm, but the one thing he likes to do, he likes to bootleg. Watch him to take the three steps uh, drop, roll out beside the tackles. Second down and eight for Jason Stahl, the junior quarterback from Seymour, Indiana. And the handoff to Johnson. Johnson spins away. He's up to 25 to the 26. 
setting up a third down play. Emory Tyler on the tackle, but they had him stacked up behind the line of scrimmage, but he was able to bust free. Well, well, Tyler right there just came through the line of offensive line, made contact, but the one thing you like about Tyler, he stayed after the ball. The Hofstra defense, they feel, is improved. Uh, led up front, of course, uh, by Tyler. The linebacking core, they like Irve Damas and Joey Driver. They're doing an excellent job. And the secondary, a bit of a question mark with the loss of Lee Harris. Third and three. Again, working out of the eye. The Johnson pitch looks for the first down and has it as he crosses the 30 to the 32-yard line. Joey Driver, the outside linebacker, number 34, converted from the backfield, the offensive backfield, made the stop. And the one thing, if you're going to beat the run and shoot, you have to have time of possession on your favor. Right now, you see what uh, Butler doing. They're just pitching the ball to Johnson. Johnson breaks outside, picks up the first down, and the clock keeps ticking. One of the areas that uh, Greg Gigantino felt his team had to improve on was the rushing defense. Defense. They gave up about 220 yards a game last year to teams on the ground. Stall to throw for the first time. Has good protection. Now steps up. He's got five. Stumbling across the 40 and is down as he got to around the 42-yard line. However, there is a flag on the play. Emery Tyler... And Fritzy Avon over there, but we saw the athletic ability of Stoll on that play. Apparently no flag on the play, so it is going to be a first down as they move the chains, Marty. Well, Stoll went back. He had excellent protection. Right there, the Flying Dutchman, they have to leave somebody at home. You can't make the middle of the field and flood the outside and leave it wide open. First and 10 at the 42-yard line. Johnson off the left side of the line to the 48-49 yard line. Irve Damas, the outside linebacker, on the stop along with Emery Tyler. Well, Tyler's making excellent penetration up front. Bro. What he has to do is once he crosses that offensive line, he's got to wrap up Johnson. Johnson is a strong running back. He's 6'1", 210, and he runs like a tank. Well, very hard runner. He won't break the big one, but uh, he's a prototype big back. Five-yard pickup, so it's second and five as you look at Emery Tyler. Hofstra working out of a 4-3. A little movement on the line, and we'll get our first penalty. Looked like Tyler might have crossed the line of scrimmage there. Well, that's the one thing Joe said earlier in the season. You know, during camp, he says Emery Tyler has got to be disciplined enough to stay on side. As we see, he's coming off the field right now. Dead ball foul. Coach Smith, defense, five-yard penalty. Repeat second down. Referee Arthur Bellows with the call. And right here, as we isolate, watch Emory Tyler. You don't want to take that type of enthusiasm out of a player, but that just costs your team five yards, gives another first down, first down and watch Butler. Now they're inside uh, Holster's territory. Brian Healy has replaced Emory Tyler, number 45, at one of the tackle spots. First and 10 at the 46-yard line for the Butler Bulldogs. Scoreless first quarter. Inside the, the fullback, Steve Yule. And Yule gets inside the 45. Fritz Aven wrapping him up, along with Hervé Damas. Well, Hervé Damas, there's nothing but good words coming out of Joe Gardy. Gigatino, the defense coordinators about this young man. They say he wears number 56 because they remind him of a Lawrence Taylor, a Lance Mel. People in the NFL that are proud to wear that number. Well, around Hofstra, they like to think uh, Eric Ringo and uh, tight ball player Jeff Brown. Those were two great linebackers they had a couple of years ago, Marty. Second and nine, a one-yard pickup by the fullback Steve Ewell. Stall to throw with plenty of time, looking deep for his wide receiver Hill, deflected way over the head. Peter Scheibe had his hand on the football. And Peter Scheibe was in excellent position, almost to make an interception. Right there, Stalls, all he has to do is go back, take your time, let your receiver get behind the defender. As we watch, Barry, look at the time, he doesn't zip the ball, he doesn't follow through. As a result, the ball is going to float up there. Just an excellent defensive play. And you saw Hill stumble there. Hill is a six foot 195 pound senior who caught 27 passes last year. Third and nine passing situation as they send in another wide receiver. Kevin Gribbins, number one, wide to the bottom of your screen as a third flanker. Stall with time. Now we'll step up and run and wrapped up by Vinny Leone, who is one of the surprises of training camp. And Vinny Leone, he came back stronger. He's dedicated. Right there is a perfect example. If you play hard and you continue to work, you can get to the quarterback. 
as we isolate on look he's already blocked but he, the determination comes in there makes a big defensive play you saw he got away from Damon Black number 69 good punter in the ball game Ronnie White and he scales this one into the end zone a 46 yard kick and Hofstra will take over first and 10 at the 20 yard line so the defense coming up with some big plays there Martin. Well the defense is giving the offense excellent field position here's George Bizo first opportunity for 1993 and look they're already on the line of scrimmage and they're ready to go. We'll get the quick starting lineup Bizel of course with White the rest of the starting lineup there, the big change is Robert Brogan, who's new to the starting lineup. Jeff Piketty is the super back. Hofstra wants to do a lot of throwing early here. Beisel throwing up the middle, incomplete. He had Brogan up the middle. He was the intended receiver, Robert Brogan, about 15 yards downfield. Let's take a look at the offensive line, and that certainly they feel is improved area. Last year, they were decimated with injuries, had to go with all the freshmen. All freshmen, now they're sophomore, now they're matured. But you see what Joe Gardy's doing right now? He's coming out and attacking Butler. They've already got the first four plays called, and they're running the veer right there. They hand off to Piketty up the middle for a short gainer, but that's what Joe Gardy wants to do. He wants to keep Butler guessing. About a four-yard pickup. A look at George Beisel. Didn't start the season last year as the regular quarterback. Took over in the fourth game. Did a pretty good job after that. Now facing a third and six from the 24-yard line. The senior quarterback out of Philadelphia. Faisal dumping it off complete to Michael Wright. And Wright has the first down as he dove across the 30. Larry Winters, number 22, the defensive back, covering on the play. It's a 5-2 defense. Rosevich is a great nose guard. Now I have to watch that matchup against Owen Gardner. The secondary, of course, is good, but the linebacking crew, Dave Captain, the big story on this team. And that is their strong point, Barry, but it, as, as you see now in the run and shoot, the linebackers are more concerned about the flats. Faisal with time, stepping up, plenty of time, airing it deep, looking for Michael Wright and overthrows him. As defending on the play was Shane Greer, number 36. As Faisal aired that one out about 40 yards. But one thing you have to be impressed with right now, Barry, is the way this offensive lineman, they're coming out, they're attacking the front seven of uh, Butler, and they're holding their own. These guys matured last year. Even though they went four and six, they learned by that experience. Butler playing without Elgin Reese, who was their leading sack man last year. He's bothered by a shoulder injury, didn't make the trip. He had 14 sacks. This Bulldog team sacked the quarterback 40 times last year. Quick pitch complete to Grogan. And Grogan shy of the first down, a nine-yard pickup. Grogan was a wishbone quarterback in high school. They redshirted him last year, was injured, and expecting big things out of him. Had a real great training camp. Joe Gardy said, when you look at this young man, you don't expect much, but when he comes off the line of scrimmage, he'll always find that open hole. And the one thing he does, he makes things happen. Third, let's call it about two. 9.40 to go in this scoreless first quarter. Barry Landers, Marty Lyons, Carl Reuter at Hofstra Stadium. Now he motions right in motion. And Beisel handing off to Bichetti, fighting for the first down. It'll be close as he got across the 41. Had to get to the 41 and a half as he was stopped. It'll be close. Let's see if they're going to mark it. There's an injury down on the field. You can see one of the Bulldogs shaking up on the play. It looks like Dan Manjo, number 64. That would be a big loss for this team, Marty. 6'3", 240 senior from Louisville, who was honorable mention all-conference last year. And right now they're thin at that defensive line position. And with the run and shoot, you're going to have to send players in and out because the humidity is hot tonight. We had rain up here in New York all day. It's uh, a little humid out there, and you're going to have to get fresh legs. Well, Manjo led the team in uh, pressures last year with 10. Now, let's see if we can spot how he got hurt on this replay. Well, right here, 64 Manjo is coming in off the uh, right tackle. He gets in there, and that right there is a chop block, Barry, by number 74. That right there, they changed the rule this year on the chop block. You can't go below the, the thigh. Last year, it was the knee. Right there, that could cause serious knee injuries. Dave Fiore, number 74, was uh, the man with that block. Dave was the center last year. Interesting that Joe Gardy made some changes. Owen Gardner was moved to center. They like his speed in that position. He's very quick. Fiore moved to tackle. How do you feel about those moves? Well, they like Gardner in there because he's quick. He can handle the quick man, uh, the nose tackle. Banjo up and will head off. I'm happy to report that he's heading off uh, pretty much on his own. 
and will be replaced in the lineup right now as they make some changes. It is a first down as they did pick up the first down on that last play. Bulldogs uh, send in number 77 and on the uh, team, Terry Bolin. So here we go with first and 10 at the 42-yard line for Hofstra. 9.20 to go, no score, first quarter. Hofstra, notorious poor starting ball club, looking to get on track here. Again, buys it with great time. He'll put it on the ground and cross the 45. Fumbles the football, picked up, however, by one of the wide receivers, Kenny Colon. But the ball will be down back at the point of the fumble at the 48-yard line. Manny Matsakis on the sideline, the offensive coordinator. That's a change this year, Marty. Well, the one thing Joe wanted to have was a better relationship between his offense coordinator and the quarterback. With Manny coming down, the signals are going to get in quicker. They will be clearer. And George Bible shouldn't have any reason not to get the play off in time. Well, that play ended up as a six-yard gain, so let's call it second and four. Beisel again with good protection, now in trouble, and will be sacked. Back at the 37-yard line, Steve Rosevich, number 51, along with number 33, Shane Bays, one of the uh, wide uh, defensive end positions, coming up with the stop. Well, we talked about Rosevich, his quickness. Right there, he beats the offensive lineman off the line of scrimmage, sacks him, puts George Basel and the Flying Dutchman in a third and 12 situation. Yeah, Al Hofstra was sacked 53 times last year, and that was, as Marty mentioned in the pregame, one of the areas they wanted to improve on. Protecting the quarterback. Third and 12 from the 39. Michael Wright in motion. Clock down to three seconds. He's got to get the play off quickly. He gets it off in time. Faisal looking and could not be held by Rafael Morales up at the 48-yard line. And setting up a punting situation. Shane Greer, the coverage. And it'll be the first punt of the night for the Hofstra Flying Dutchman. Eric Cross has done a good job in the preseason. He'll be doing the punting right now, the freshman, number eight. Well, Joe says he has a strong hey, leg. Let's see if they form a wall now. Tell our guys. Eric Voss is the deep man. And as you look at Eric Cross, they've got a nine-man front. See if they come on this uh, kick against the freshman. They'll get it away. Voss, an excellent returner, will take it at the 13-yard line. Great downfield coverage, and Hofstra stopping him at the 14-yard line, a 49-yard punt, and a two-yard return, as the Flying Dutchman had great coverage on that kick then, and it was Alvon Brown, a freshman defensive back, who they're very high on getting down there real quick. Well, they they're, they take a lot of class and a lot of respect in their special teams. Right there, you see Avon Brown coming down, making things happen. A great kick by Cross, but no net return. Remember, the punting game was a shambles last year for the Hofstra Flying Dutchman. So they put it in play. First to 10 at the 13-yard line. Seven and a half minutes ago, we are a scoreless first quarter. Stall to Johnson. Johnson stung as he got to the 15-yard line by Herve Damas. And that's what we're talking about. Herve Damas coming on off, coming off that offensive tackle's butt and making the tackle behind the line of scrimmage. He follows the play great, Barry. 6'3", 240. We'll take another look. Watch him right here. Come off the offensive tackle, comes directly down the line of scrimmage. He sees the play developing, and wow, right there in the backfield. Well, he's an explosive tackler. Number two tackler last year on the club with 82. Second and nine. Not much there as the ball advanced to the 18-yard line, setting up a third down play. Hofstra's defense looking good. Jeff Johnston, the middle linebacker. He had a battle with Mike Pepper for that spot. They alternated a little bit last year, but Johnston's won the uh, job clearly this year. Well, Barry, we talked about that front seven. The defensive line, the linebackers, they're pretty solid. Right now, Butler, they haven't tested the secondary yet. Third and five for the Bulldogs. Let's see if they put it in the air. Stall again working out of the eye. Wide receivers left and right. Here's Johnson on the pitch behind the block of Stahl. And again, driving right to Jeff Johnson. That swarming defense that Joe Gardy made famous here with Hofstra four years ago. Doing it right there once again. You saw Fritzy Avon, Jeff Johnston, and a lot of guys right in the middle of the action right there. As Hofstra's defense comes up with a big play. There's Jeff Johnston. But let's give credit to number 12, Dante Gilliam, who came up from a strong safety position, took on the lead blocker, knocked him down so that Jeff Johnston 
Justin could come over and finish him off. White to get it across. Dante Gillum almost blocked it. Piketty will take this. No fair catch. And there's a flag thrown on the play. Piketty driven back 15 yards. They had some great coverage on that kick as well. And another flag, Barry, which I believe will be on Butler for unnecessary roughness. And I believe Jeff Piketty might have got his hand up right at the end. Dave Elson, number 18, was the guy that leveled him at the end of the play. He's hits like a ton. He's like Dante Gillum. Officials talking it over right now. Referee Arthur Bellows' crew. The first thing they're discussing, Barry, you have to give the re return man an opportunity to field the ball. Two fouls on the play. This will give Hofstra some big yardage. An excellent field position. Well, we talked about one of the things the defense didn't do last year, Marty, was really swarm to the ball, make those big plays, give the offense great field position. Uh, they've done a good job so far on a couple of these drives so far. But interference with the opportunity to catch a kick on White. Well, Barry, so far I'm two for two this year. <laughs> We've got time out of the field. We're scoreless first quarter. You're watching Oshka Football on Sports Channel. Big money to New Yorkers and has grown to be one of the strongest banking institutions in the country. Whether you need a mortgage, home improvement, auto, or student loan, or money for any good reason, you'll find Home Federal's rates most competitive. Call Home Federal, and they'll go over your game plan and come up with the right strategy. Home Federal is a member of FDIC, an equal housing lender. Call them at 1-800-LOAN-CTR. That's 1-800-L-O-A-N-C-T-R. Home Federal takes the mystery out of banking. All right, Barry, right here, you have to give the return man an opportunity two yards. Right there, the defender from Butler, he comes up, he wraps him up. Now watch when the first flag is thrown. Right there, the flag is thrown. Now as they start to wrap him up, another whistle comes in. That means the play should stop. Butler did not stop. It cost him 30 yards in penalties. That was Dave Kathman. Interesting. He snaps the ball on the punts, and he was the first man downfield. And their pre-season -all All-American coming up with a mental mistake there. First down for Hofstra. Beisel throwing short to Bichetti. A little stutter step got away from the defender and goes out of bounds around the 21-yard line. Kathman finally brought him down, but he made a nice move on the defender and was able to break free and pick up some extra yardage that time. And everyone around here compares Jeff Bichetti to old, the old Mark Cox. Right there, if Jeff Bichetti can continue to make those moves like that and continue to stay healthy, when his career is up, he'll definitely be in the record books. Second and less than a yard, inches for the first down. Beisel barking out signals in this no huddle, run and shoot. Bichetti directly behind him. And Bichetti spinning, had to get inside the 20, and he got it for the first down. Chris Toner, their fastest defensive lineman on the stop, number 37, the defensive end. Well, right now, Hofstra's just trying to loosen up that the front seven. They're just trying to pick up the first down and get a little bit of momentum, get a little bit of confidence for this your offensive line. Get George Beisel to set a win, get Jeff Bichetti, get everybody involved, and not make a mistake. Manny Matsak is setting in the play from the sideline. First and 10 at the 20. Grogan going in motion. Looks like some movement. Buys a quick pitch out here. And Morales got stripped as he got to the 21-yard line. Shane Greer coming up quick from that quarterback spot. Got a piece of him and uh, took him down. Good defensive play by Greer stopping Morales. But right there, I think we're going to have a penalty of all sides. Looked like there was movement on the right side of the line, and that's what they called. So the Bulldogs will be penalized. Hofstra will take the penalty, a five-yard walk-off. And it should be first and five from the 15. Offside, defense, five-yard penalty, repeat first down. Hofstra with three wide receivers to the left. Piketty offset now as a wing. Beisel on first down. 
has Grogan in motion. He'll try a screen to Bichetti. Bichetti fumbles the football. It's loose. And looks like uh, the Dayton Flyers have recovered the football. <laughs> it looks like the Bulldogs have recovered the football. And with Shane Bays, number 33, coming up with a the football there for the Butler Bulldogs, who will play the Dayton Flyers in their conference this year. Look like a Dayton kind of play, the way they play defense. Well, right here, George Beisel, he's going to go back. He's just thrown a middle screen to Jeff McKinney. Jeff McKinney makes an excellent move right there. But right there, number 51 comes in from behind. Rossovich, we talked about his feet, comes back, makes things happen. Uh, and there's another mistake, a turnover. So Hofstra turns it over first and 10 at the 15-yard line. In trouble, Stone chased by Tyler, throws it downfield, incomplete. Hill was the intended receiver up at the 35-yard line, but Emery Tyler putting some good pressure on the quarterback that time. Well, Emery Tyler came back in. He's stronger. He's faster. The big thing is Emery Tyler has to keep within himself and mentally stay in the game. Second and 10 with 4.33 to go in the first quarter. Hofstra and the Butler Bulldogs scoreless. First time these clubs have met. So the, there's Kenny LaRose, second year coach. He was the defensive coordinator for many years. This defense a couple of years ago was number one in the nation in Division II. Well, I think LaRose is going to realize before long, he's going to have to open it up. He's going to have to get stalls to throw the ball and make something happen. This front seven of, of Hofstra, they're pretty solid. Stall is 0 for 2. He'll go up top, up the middle, looking for Hill. Hill beats Sadler on the play. He's across midfield. Another defender goes down. One man back there. Scheibe trying to get him, and Sadler will try to get him. And he goes into the end zone for an 85-yard touchdown. John Hill coming up with the touchdown reception. Sadler and Shanahan had chances on that play. And Joe Gordy was concerned about the pass, the point of attack when you go up for the ball. Hill showed why he's an outstanding receiver, made some great moves after catching the football. Well, Hall, once he once Hill caught the ball, Barry, and he got behind the secondary, he just picked his spots to make his move. A great throw, great pass protection, and six points on the board. Pat Kelly, the freshman place kicker to attempt the extra point. Of course, the hash marks have been moved in, as you know, this year. Kelly's kick is up, and it just squirts across. It is good. And so taking a page out of the Hofstra playbook, it is uh, the Butler Bulldogs striking for the big play. 85-yard touchdown pass. Jason Stahl's 10th career touchdown pass. Well, we talked about LaRose so over there saying, I've got to open that up. Watch Stahl. He'll go back. He gets excellent protection. Watch Hill. He gets behind the defender. And now watch. Here he goes. He makes a cut to the outside. He's going to make a cut back inside. And right here, he's got an excellent block out there by number 12. Shanahan had no help. Well, initially, Rocco Sadler was the man who was beaten. You'll see number 11, the free safety. He's filling in for the injury to Lee Harris. Lee Harris, he's the captain. He's out with that herniated disc. Rocco Sadler, a mistake that he's going to learn from. You can never let an offensive receiver get behind. Last man back, number 26, but he stumbled after getting hit. There's a look at uh, Hill, a senior out of Indianapolis, physical uh, physics and engineering major, who was the number two receiver last year on this club. He's got 4'7 speed. He's the kind of guy that can catch it over the middle, Nardi, in traffic. And he showed he had the speed to break it there. So Hofstra trailing right now, 7 to nothing. It looked like they were going in for the score. But the turnover proves costly. Bacchetti will take it at the 15. Got to turn it outside. 25. And Kathmit got a piece of him, number 83, the All-American linebacker. And it'll set up a first and 10 for the Flying Dutchman. And there's a flag on the play, Barry. Right now, the referee is discussing it. It may go against Hofstra right there. 
Could be a clip. Legal block on the return. Let's see if we can spot it on Shanahan. There's Jeff McKetty. He's getting outside, and here it is. A mental mistake right there. Jeff McKetty was already going down. The play was over. Illegal block in the back. On the return team, 10-yard penalty, first down. Marty Urshan was the man who he hit in the back. Now taking a look at that uh, summary, two plays, 85 yards, took just 22 seconds for Hill to catch up to that 85-yard bomb from Stahl. And the Bulldogs of Butler leading it 7 to nothing after the extra point. 4-10 to go, first quarter. Beisel with Piketty in the backfield. Beisel throwing quick complete to Morales for the first down up at the 33-yard line. Battle for the ball, but uh, after the whistle. Shane Greer on the tackle, but here's a guy they hope that can stay healthy all year. Rafael Morales, fifth-year uh, senior from Puerto Rico. And he's got excellent speed right there. He just ran a down and in. And George Beisel, excellent protection, delivered the ball. Beisel is five for eight for 41 yards. And that's one up for grabs. Michael Wright was in the middle of a couple of guys. Shane Greer, number 36, was over there, along with Cameron McDaniel. And right there, there's a perfect example. George Basel rolling out to his left, tries to throw back to the right, lost the ball, threw it up for grabs. Watch the pass pattern. He's just coming across the middle, but watch how the ball just floats up there. Two guys, three defenders, around, two defenders, two offensive players in the same zone. Second and 10 from the 32. With time. And then out of the hands once again of the receiver, Michael Wright, who spent a lot of time this summer catching balls, could not hang on. Cameron McDaniel again covering. And Joe Gardy's biggest concern was not George Beisel delivering the ball, the receivers catching the ball. He said during camp this summer, they had too many drop passes. Last week against in the scrimmage, the blue gold scrimmage, numerous passes dropped. It's not George Beisel, the receivers have to concentrate. 3.36 to go in this first quarter. Hofstra trailing 7-0. Facing a third and 10. Beisel looking for Michael Wright. And this time Wright again diving. Cannot hang on at the 48-yard line. Cameron McDaniel once again on the coverage. And Hofstra will be forced to punt. Well, right there, George Beisel delivers the ball. Number 22, Winters, comes up. Looks like he's going to tip the ball. Wright has got to concentrate. That ball has got to be caught. There's a first down. He's behind the defender. That's the fault of the receivers. Well, that 85-yard touchdown pass, just three yards shy of the all-time record touchdown pass for a Butler quarterback. Eric Cross, 49-yard punt his first time. It was a dandy. Gets good protection and hangs this one up nicely. Voss will call for a fair catch this time at the 24-yard line. Will be first and 10 for Butler. 44-yard punt. Two good kicks. 49-44. No return on either party, really. And watch Butler to come back out and challenge the secondary. They know that their receivers are getting behind this young secondary. They're going to go out. They haven't had very much success running the ball. Look for them to come back. Go for the big play right now. Jason Stahl, honorable mention all-conference quarterbacks. Got good size, 6'3", 190, just a junior. Took over as starting quarterback after the first game last year. Johnson, straight up the middle, runs into a wall, and he doesn't even get back to the line of scrimmage. Emery Tyler, who looks awfully good at 6'2", 260, and Joey Driver coming up from the linebacker spot, number 34. Well, Joey Driver is a guy that's uh, very unselfish. He came over from the running back position to take a outside linebacker position. He's a hard hitter. Joe Gardy said, this is a guy that had the fullback. He wanted to play defense. He loved defense. He just loves hitting people. Well, he's born to play defense is the way Joe put it. Remember what a job Scully did when they moved him from offense to defense a few years ago for Hofstra. Second and 10 at the 25. Gribbins wide to the left. Here's the pitch to Johnson. Tries the right side. Burst into the secondary. 
and has the first down as he got to the 36-yard line. Fritzy even on the tackle, but not before he picked up about 11 to 12 yards on the play. And you've got to be impressed with the guy that's 6'1", 210, that has that amount of speed. He hits the hole right off the tackle, and watch the way he moves, Barry. It's just a quick pitch. He gets an excellent block right there, and look how he picks his hole. Fritzy Avron comes up, makes the tackle, but not until he gets that first down. Clock ticking, 2.28 to go, first quarter. In case you're just tuning in, Butler leading it 7 to nothing. On the wings of an 85-yard touchdown pass from Jason Stahl to John Hill. Now Butler will call timeout with 2.21 to go in this first quarter. Next week, uh, Hofstra will play at Rhode Island. We won't televise that game, but we'll have all the other Hofstra games on their schedule right here on Sports Channel. A couple of Hofstra's opponents began play today. And we'll give you their scores a little bit later. Next Saturday, St. Peter's Peacocks and the St. John's Redmen inaugurate the MAC Football League. Saturday night coming up at 7 o'clock right here on Sports Channel. Live and exclusive on Sports Channel. Bob Rick has got quite an uh, athlete in Anthony Russo. Looking forward to seeing that great running back. And St. Peter's defense, one of the best in the nation last year in Division Three. Anthony Russo about ready to go in the record books, Barry. And their quarterback, Sean Sharkey, has done a good job. Right now, Joe Gardy concerned. His club trailing seven to nothing. Defense has done a pretty good job, except for that one big play. And it was big plays last year that hurt Hofstra, some big passing plays. Right now, ball set back for play. At the 36-yard line. Rich Johnson picking up that first down on that last carry. Stall on first down to throw, complete to Hill. Hill down at the 43-yard line by Hervé Damas. Pick up of around six or seven on the flood. And what you're seeing now is Butler's going out there. Every time they run the ball, the front seven, they collapse. Now they're going to run a little fake here and there, and they get that Hill where they get Boss coming over the middle. The linebackers are already either sucked back or sucked up too far, and they're going to pick up those seven and eight yards. Now they don't throw to the tight end very often. We haven't seen him at all in action. Travis Dixon, number 82, is a good blocker. Again, two wideouts, high formation. Johnson straight ahead behind the center. Todd Schaefer, and he gets inside the 45 uh, to around the 44-yard line. Emory Tyler, who's had a good ball game, and Vinny Paisano. A little uh, fire plug at, what about, 5'11", 290? Well, they have him listed at six, six feet, 300 pounds, and he's every bit of that bearing, and number 79 out there. So another big third down play, third and inches coming up for Hostia. They'll send Mike Gifford, number 61, into the ball game. He'll come in replacing Emory Tyler. He's another big guy, 5'11", 285. Try to stop the first down attempt here. Hofstra with uh, seven men at the line of scrimmage on the keeper. Stahl trying to surge forward for the first down. Needed just inches. And it looks like they mark his forward progress close to the 48. They unpile. Clock is running with 40 seconds to go in this first quarter. And they'll bring the chains in to measure. Now they'll stop the clock, as you see. Marty, what about bringing the hash marks in? Uh, we have seen uh, really not that much of an effect in this game because teams are running straight ahead and you've got a passing attack. But how do you feel about it? Well, I think it's going to give the kickers the big angle. Before, with them being six feet closer to the sidelines, you couldn't get the proper angle. You can't get the proper lift. And as a result, last year we saw a lot of missed field goals. Wow. You can see how close it is. It is short by a couple of inches. And Kenny LaRose is not going to gamble, apparently. He's going to bring the kicking unit in. Well, Kenny LaRose is taking it. You know, if he, if he went for it and he gambled for it and he didn't make it, it would be a big mistake. If he made it, you run the clock out. You turn the ball around in the second quarter. It's the best thing to do, Barry. Punt the ball. Get good field position for your defense. Ronnie White, their putter, is their all-time leading putter in attempts. And average, he's punted twice tonight, averaging 39. A 46-yarder his last time. Jeff Piketty standing back at the 15. 
Let's see if they try to draw him offside here. White with, oh, Donnie Gillum getting in there. And Sadler will field this upfield. And he stopped at the 22-yard line. Boy, Donnie Gillum, who we saw block one last year, has great speed. Almost got to the quarterback there. And two weeks ago, we saw him take one back for 98 yards in the scrimmage, in the blue gold scrimmage. But watch the balance here. Dante Gillian, he's coming off the corner. And watch right here. He holds up. Otherwise, it's an automatic first down, roughing the kicker. So with 22 seconds to go, George Beisel puts it in play first and 10 at the 23-yard line. New super back in the ball game is Michael Wright. Michael will play both at super back and receiver. Hofstra now with five receivers lined up. Faisal under pressure will screen it complete. This is the speedy Michael Wright trying to turn it down the sideline. He got short yardage to the 28-yard line. Shane Greer doing a good job at that cornerback spot. Number 36 on the coverage. However, we have another flag on the play. Could be a possible illegal block by Hofstra on that play on that little screen. And that appears to be the call, Marty. Well, we talked earlier, Barry, you cannot afford to make the mental mistakes. Mental mistakes are offsides, penalties. As we saw last uh, in the last series, when you have a, a Jeff Piketty down on the ground, you can't come up and try to give a little extra effort to hit that defender. Illegal block on the back. On the offense, 10-yard penalty from the spot. Repeat first down. So Hofstra now faced with uh, the 10 yard walk off with 12 seconds to go in this first quarter. As we mentioned earlier, over the last several years, Hofstra, notorious slow starter offensively. They don't score many points in the first quarter. First and 15. Will Beisel get this uh, playoff before the quarter ends? And they apparently will let the play go. Morales down the sideline as the horn sounded. Out of bounds at around the 27-yard line, driven out by Shane Greer as the first quarter has come to an end. And the Bulldogs of Butler lead it 7 to nothing on the 85-yard touchdown pass from Jason Stahl to John Hill. We'll be back with second quarter action in just a moment. 